welcome back, fellow armchair generals, and we're going to be talking about some of the naval organization and command in just a moment. But before then, a bit of a plug. Um, Saturday morning's my time, 7 a.m., and you can go to my Twitch um, uh, channel, and gamer underscore 1745 over there, and you'll see now a countdown timer clock that will give seven, will give the local time of when the stream is scheduled to start. Um, and at the same time on Sundays, I will be doing a, I will try to be doing at least a live um, stream on YouTube, which you're seeing the recording from um, the live stream here. Um, of course, if you want to catch the full live stream, it is also up on YouTube with the chat on the side. Uh, so you know a little better what's being talked about. You can watch it there. Um, but today I was about 15 minutes or so late because um, sort of the interesting story that I'm telling you is mostly for the viewers now, but you get to hear it too. Um, this is Sunday morning. Um, Saturday night, about 8 p.m., uh, my home lost power. And I look out, yep, the whole neighborhood's without power. And I go out, and after a while, after about half an hour, decide to go to the grocery store. I was thinking of going anyways. Um, but thought, well, might as well go out, and maybe by the time I get back, they'll have the power back on. Because sometimes power's back on in a, in a minute or two, literally, and other times it may be half an hour, an hour. Well, I happen to see a truck driving down the alley of my street that's a power company truck, and they have like a searchlight up looking at the power lines as they're slowly, slowly driving down the alley. So he stops, and I sort of look at, see where he's looking, and I could see that there's a problem up there. Part of, on the telephone pole, a crossbar, wooden crossbar. Um, there, one half of it is sort of dangling about four or five feet down from the other half of it, and it looks like a um, transformer or whatever you call the barrel-like thing up there. It looks like it sort of slid down about three, four feet from it. So, yep, there's a problem, and I so I talked to the guy, and... He says, well, you know, how long is it going to take to fix? Well, not too long. Okay, and what does that mean? An hour or so? Oh, no, it's going to be longer than that. It's going to be a few hours once the crew gets here. This this guy in the truck has a you know bucket lifter thing that could get him up to the power lines um, correctly, but I can well imagine that he his repair does not include carrying it with him a new crossbar piece and other things up there to, to do that uh, appropriately so um, so and I go well you know I do have a live stream on YouTube at 7 a.m. scheduled and I hope to make it and all that and so eh, he doesn't know so and of course you know that so I go away and so I spend the night basically I, I got some flashlights and little battery powered lanterns here but without power and, and get, finally get to sleep and then right about 6 a.m. On comes my television because I hadn't turned it off. It was just on when the power went out. So that wakes me up. So I was a little late getting started. Just sort of an interesting story from life of a YouTuber, live streamer, that things go wrong. And just um, Arno was mentioning the blooper I did on Slytherin's channel, which I'm now regularly, um, continually going to be streaming, streaming also um, for Slytherin. Um, Currently, it seems to be Thursdays at 11 a.m., but I don't know what it'll be this coming week or whenever it is you may be watching this after. Um, this is where I tripped. Well, I didn't trip, but my foot caught the um, keyboard cable that made the keyboard go to the floor, and that sort of unplugged a, a cable that connected one of my monitors, and because of that happened, the keyboard landed face down, and for some reason the key hit made the stop recording the visual image so I was still broadcasting sound so I had to restart things so that was a bit of a blooper but yeah live TV so please join me sometime whether on Slytherin's channel or on and I'll guarantee you something on Slytherin you would like um, strategic command is a very good game you may not want to play that but there's other things that something there at some point you would you would like to play okay get to the point that we were going to start this um, uh, talking about is the new command structure for the Navy. Th this is, um, and I haven't dug into all of the details, but so this is um, uh, 
currently under James, um, what is it, um, Somerville, um, fleet command. And you can see all of the ships under the different task forces. So now he's not just um, in command of a fleet. He's in, he's in command of a fleet that has task forces. And this I really like. Um, and so that you can set up to have different um, task forces you can um, select just this task force and send it on missions, including back um, enable exercises we can do now, which will burn fuel. Um, and again, like we can see here, again, fuel, if you didn't catch the first episode where we cover this, current consumption is zero, but I do like that it says e max consumption if we have everything being completely active or just the Army, Air, and Navy active. And so you can better understand that max consumption versus up near the top daily gain. And notice there's a whole lot more consumption potential than the daily gain. So um, if we start doing everything, flying all of our aircraft, sailing all of our ships and driving all of our vehicles and tanks around, we're going to pres um, and we have current um, up there, current fuel reserves at the top line of that. Um, we're going to draw down quickly all of our fuel, very quickly, potentially. So uh, somebody like Germany, that becomes a very a serious thing. We can just um, start trading for more oil from America or other places so that it is not such the needing for a um, uh, um, uh, stockpiles. Okay, so we have this. What I don't like about this so far, and there isn't, that I wish when we were talking earlier about modding, is I would like to be able to, um, like we can with the army, have a bit of a hierarchy in which I could put a, um, and I've looked for it, and I don't know, and yes, I have played, and then I, this, um, the ability to assign a specific submarine commander to this task force. Or if we come back up, as we can see his different task forces here as we click across here in, in a red, um, well, I guess this is supposed to be a um, trident. Um, and so he has a lot of actually um, too, too many for his proper command capabilities. Um, but I wish we could have each one of those have, just because I like the immersion. And I know some viewers that's just too much to manage. But so these are all of the fleet commands and we can see currently so far east and we might as well see about um, uh, blockade runner naval lineage aviation enthusiast yeah we'll give Bruce Frazier the far east and so we can see here he has 29 ships all told and these are the the task forces so they've really done a really good job so you're no longer I guess you could but you're no longer and when they sort of pop out once we have things on auto they're just all popping out here under the you know, United Kingdom Fleet 1, so they got light cruisers and destroyers and submarines, that, so that's unorganized, of course, um, but it is a thing. Um, I will temporarily give John Cunningham, uh, which I don't know much about that command, but um, North and South America Station, um, old, old guard, and We'll give it to Harwood and the Mediterranean. So these these numbers of two, it isn't two ships. It's two task forces or flotillas or whatever you want to call it under that. Um, and we'll give that to um, Cunningham. Looks like he would be a good superior career off bold gunnery expert. Yeah. So um, we have these so we can um, specify areas of operation, um, types of roles. So, and what is important with this is that I could send out my submarine flotilla to say out here in patrol, and which we also have new, we used to have, um, uh, what, how oh, I forget, um, a sort of patrol and a, um, you know, a wide area and a concentrated patrol. Those are the two two versions that they were really proud of. I never really got why, and I always wanted to have concentrated forces. Um, but we now can do 
a sort of getting out and patrolling and that is one sort of tactic and it's going to go over the area specified it can be multiple sea areas i like that so meaning he could patrol all of the mediterranean if i wanted him to um, or i can concentrate in just one sea zone or i can do strike force which if you look at this order the task force to wait at the closest naval base until an enemy task force is spotted once the enemy is spotted, the strike force will move to that location and will attack the enemy forces. This is very, very, very important here. Um, as said before, um, I don't know if it's smart or lack of ability. You're talking about EOD uh, ordinance uh, or um, disposal um, groups blowing things up, blowing bombs up. Yeah, how smart that is. Uh, I um, salute your bravery, JP. Salute your bravery. I don't know that I would want to do that um, job either. Um, is I like to micromanage things, but in a game scale, this you, theoretically you could by having the clock move super slow and constantly pausing it to and looking everywhere. But there are things I don't like to micromanage, like the air. I like the idea that I sort of set up the air and have the air war run according to my, you know, like, are we going to put fighters up over Britain or are we going to, you know, you sort of, you know, or, or are we going to put fighters out over the channel or some such thing? Set that up and let it run. So this allows us to, as you, I'm sure you've already guessed, is that we could put this out as a strike force here or somebody like Italy who has limited amounts of fuel, you know, somewhere in Toronto, which is, I know, Calabria, but Tor Toronto, 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 um, here they finally got that base in the, this one's based in the right space um could put that out here uh have their fleet all sitting here and then have this area specified um this c zone is to as a strike force and so when they see a british fleet come through here worthy out dashes the italian fleet to engage it has its battle you you if you're playing the italians you hope you win of course um, and but when the battle is done, it goes back and no longer burns fuel. So that is a really, really, um, yeah. And uh, Andrew Cunningham was the first lead admiral for the Mediterranean during. I believe that was the case. I wasn't sure enough to start stating that, um, Duncan, but that's sort of why I put him there. Um, and so, um, the strike force uh, mechanic here is very good for four nations. So somebody like Germany, because I often play Germany, I would not want to have um, my Navy on strike force out here into the North Sea or somewhere or anywhere out here because I don't trust the AI to go, oh yeah, there's the enemy fleet. Let's send out our two battleships and some battle you know, cruisers and a few destroyers. Oh yeah, we're sending them out against a huge uh, task force uh, or you know, with a bunch of carriers and a bunch of battleships, and it's just going to be not to make the uh, you know make a bad judgment. Send it out a, after a very big enemy fleet. Fleet, but I could very well see doing doing that for Germany in say the Baltic, so that they're sitting in port, whether in Danzig or somewhere else here, and they spot the Soviet fleet out doing its mischief. Out they go because I'm going to presume that my Kriegsmarine is going to defeat the Soviet flotillas. And so that is a very good tactic. But if I want to um, get out there, now of course we can also do convoy raiding, which so um, surface fleets, um, we'll select this, we can still do convoy raiding. A surface a task force can be a single ship, Prinz Eugen, um, or you know Bismarck, or um, Grasse Bay, you know, can, can be set up as a task force. Um, and as a complete fleet, too, if you want, um, out there and put it out at convoy rating, like submarines and go after convoys. Or we can do convoy escort, which will obviously protect the convoy um, things. Laying mines and clearing mines. We're going to get to that. We're going to be laying lots and lots of mines coming up in this series. But you can only start laying mines once you're at war. They had a lot of discussion on this. And just when is it appropriate to lay mines? Mines, um, again, my understanding, I don't I don't pay attention to all the details of naval stuff. I know I'm explaining naval stuff now. But mines, my, again, my understanding is mines will not affect friendly ships. So if I, say, spam a huge amount of mines all around the central Mediterranean trying to protect Malta, um, 
my British ships and convoys will move through without any problem because presumably these aren't random floating mines that are just, you know, get any ship. They're laid in minefields that are chartable and so we know where we put our own minefields. So they don't affect us. I also think just because of the mechanics of the game, they don't affect neutrals. Uh, I think. I don't know. I presume so. So if I go... So I can't start now and just spam mines all over Italy knowing forewarned that I know I'm going to go to war with them. So it's only in peacetime, but if I spam mines around Italy, neutral Yugoslavia can still trade or um, send its ships, you know, in the Adriatic or somewhere else without hitting my mines that are targeting the Axis. Also, we know um, instead of trying to dominate um, uh, naval zones to allow sea invasions, we can now escort sea invasions. And so they will follow along with the troops. My understanding, and I have not, and we will see about this if this comes, is that if you put, um, whether it's a patrol or a strike force, they will come out and engage and block um, troop transports if the um, naval invasion happens. So if you have two destroyers and they go out to engage the naval invasion, they very well may win if it's not escorted. But if you've got two destroyers and they've got 10 battleships, they're going to destroy your, um, destroy your destroyers and come in and successfully invade. Um, so you can patrol if you want to patrol, or you can, you know, set up to a, you know, a strike force to deal with invasion fleet. So you could, as Germany, and especially if modders um, make like motor torpedo boats, set them here, you know, which would have the range of, you know, one sea zone that could dash out to any allied invasion. Now, again, if it's a big, huge invasion, they very well may get sunk. But you have that escort um, support for invasion. So I think that's all of what we need to know on um, naval mission types. And again, so that you can split your fleet up, you could decide to keep your big battleships um, operating as um, a strike force. You could separate out some, say, your destroyers and put them out patrolling uh, or uh, convoy escorting or something like that. But just you can just have them patrol, which will find enemy subs in the area that you may be running convoys in that area as well or doing something like that while keeping your big um, battleships use up lots of fuel. That was a big concern for Italy and Japan, I know. Moving the battleships around um, was a very, very big concern for fuel for Japan in my recent reading. So um, if you want to keep those um, vessels in port until the critical moment, you very well can do it while using uh, lighter forces out dashing about and then of course setting up with your other out convoy rating say further into the central mediterranean just giving you a description so that's what we're going to be looking at and doing and experimenting with our naval campaign doesn't mean uh as if long time viewers know i'm i'm a ground warfare focused player so um we're definitely going to be doing that but that is um not the central point of what of what um this campaign is going to be about I built 615 of those mine cruisers. You start with the UK, and they did a great job. And most of the, yeah, oh, yeah, no, they do good. Um, but what I, and I did build out a few of those. Um, built out a few of those, but I've switched to, and I set up a mine sweeping hole set up for and a mine laying hole set up for a destroyer so they're much cheaper to do a lot more fourth international and so they're going to be set up sweepers and we're setting up you know a lot of sweepers and a lot of mine layers to spam them out as well as mine laying submarines oh and you can also lay mines from uh, ships though I have not actually done that yet though we will be doing that by the time we are at war Okay, um, France wants to join the Allies. Yes, we'll take you on as 
allies. Okay, we can now start our second production line of submarines and just for your info, um, you're clicking the right place. This is what I have done. I They still have the forward set of torpedo tubes here. So this um, can't, I guess, which makes sense, um, handle mines, but the rear set of torpedo tubes is set up, set of torpedoes, or rear set of weapons racks, set up as mine laying. So they're going to go out and lay mines. So we've done that. Okay, we are at risk. Uh, another country. Oh, yeah. We are currently the faction leader of the Allies, but it is possible that somebody else can assume faction leadership, say like the Americans. Why are you building Toad AA? Hungary joins the Axis. Because it will reinforce my ground troops. Um, infantry division. Anti-aircraft. Soft attack plus 1.8. Hard attack plus 4.2. Defense plus 2.3. That is very useful. We also have anti-tank, which is also useful, but we're doing both of those. We also add reconnaissance fairly soon. Can we do that now? Nope, got to get to 10. So yeah, that's why we're building AA. Not so much to deal with aircraft, more just as reinforcement for ground units. Yes, you can do subs, and we, you can also airdroppable mines. We can see, um, I just the reason I haven't done it is, um, oh, it's, it's over in mine laying technology. It's somewhere here. Um, no, where is, somewhere there's um, airdrop mines, I think, or something. Oh, here. Um, here, right here, that's where, I just, aerial mine laying. I, I just hadn't researched is what, the reason why I haven't done it yet. Um, I haven't played long enough. Obviously, it's way, way too early to do that now. But you can get to, um, uh, set up to air, airdrop mines from naval bombers, tactical bombers, and strategic bombers. You can see their effectiveness at mine laying. Yeah, well, we've got we've got tank, we've got artillery, and I want to stick another um, thing of artillery on. We're we're working it out. You're not wrong, Django. I'm just doing some support elements that way, and there there is good there are good arguments for um, uh, doing it here as well, but. If you do notice here, add this, um, you know, we, could, we can and we will be doing some of that too. Um, and okay, German Reich is justifying against us. How interesting. I know I have the historical thing um clicked oh god yeah start loving what's going on and they didn't do that to me before that they're justifying against us and poland isn't in the allies yet and i was expecting them to attack poland in late 1939 now justifying doesn't mean they'll actually go to war but it means they're thinking about it okay um how long until we get, okay we're gonna wait till we get Radar completed. How many days? Yeah. We'll wait. It's not justifying. There's justification war goals against us or our allies. The Reich is justifying against us. Right click to dismiss. They're going to demand the Sudetenland. Well, that's what I hope they're going to do. Um. Let's see, can we see what their current, you know, Germany's unknown focus. We don't have enough um, intel to know what they're currently um, doing. And it should be against Sudetenland, you know, wanting the Sudetenland. 
Okay, well, but see, they're not... Can't you check? Yeah, as I just tried. We, um... They, they want to do better, um, Intel. And again, I'll go on this rant, and because I saw so many people accuse, um... A paradox with cutting things out to just add it in the DLC. People, and I'm not just talking to, so if, you know, don't, um, they may end up at war with the allies because of that. Well, we're going to see, because um, I don't like the way things go for the Sudetenland. I've made my own version of it. It's really, really good. I'll say so myself. But, um, and I'm not saying anybody currently listening to me, and maybe even listening to me later, um, said this but so many people that you know they they cut so much out of the um you know from what was in hearts of iron 3 they've cut out to then just add back in dlcs for hearts of iron 4 no i know enough that this is a completely new game they've had to rebuild everything you couldn't just grab code from the old game and stick it in this and have it work at a minimum, you would have to rework that code. At best, it would be, and from things said publicly, I know, and I, again, I don't, I just want to clarify everything I'm talking about is public, um, is that even if they were to say, grab the old intelligence mechanic, or look at the old intellig me intelligence mechanic from Hearts of Iron 3 to do it right for Hearts of Iron 4, they're going to have to recode that. They can have the same type of results and same type of mechanic, but they're going to have to recode it to work with this new version of the engine, to work with this new version of the game, to come out of it. But the developers, Podcat particularly, wants to do it better than it was intelligence was done in Hearts of Iron 3. So he wants to have the spy game happen but he wants to have it happen much better than it ever happened in Hearts of Iron 3. And so to do, to try to either convert the old stuff or sort of quickly try to do new code of the old, and to have the old sort of results, it was going to cost money and take time. And we know the game was released too soon. We know they've tacitly admitted that. So, um, because they announced it too soon and, and whatever. So it wasn't ready. So they didn't cut things to add it in DLC. Just they've still got to build stuff. And so they still want to do this. But what they have looked at and are working at with some of this stuff is um, uh, simply some of this mechanic here is we haven't um, done decryption enough to have good enough spies to know what Germany's doing well enough. So um, that's why we can't see things happening as well. Also, the also the meta is spamming everything but BCs. Uh, but BCs. Well, that's I think because of the London Naval Treaty situation. I think on some of that. Okay, so now that we have done that, we can now do this very quickly, and we can also get better radars faster. Okay, now. Uh, we may be at war before I want to be at war. Air rearmament, which gets us bases, but which gets bomber and fighter. Um, amphibious warfare research to marine destroyer. Lots of good things, lots of good things. But what I want to do here now is Commonwealth ties to try to unlock some of the developments of some of these other nations, though this is also good. We're going to end up at war, but that's too soon. I don't know. Um, but we're going to start with that. Okay, I'm still not understanding you um, entirely, Django, but sorry about that. Seals and DDs can do um, torpedo pretty much every capital ship. Yes. Yes, they can. I am going to try to do mine warfare extreme in this. We are going to spam mines out everywhere and then to, to see um, its practical effects. Uh, how many? Pro oh, okay, we need a few more. We'd like a few more because I want two full production lines of mine laying subs. We are going to 
cover the waters in mines. What are the French doing out here? Oh, moving troops. Um, we'll get more fuel. We'll get more fuel. We're full up on fuel currently. We will, um, there's no need to get more fuel until we need it because we will have access to the American unlimited amounts of fuel, uh, functionally. Fuel, U.S. Um, 927, we'll be able to get Venezuela 60. Um, we'll be able to trade with Iraq. We'll be able to trade with Iran until we maybe take them over. We may lose British Malaya. The Netherlands, um, some of that fuel is coming from down here. The, for the, the Netherlands, as opposed to the Dutch East Indies fuel. But we'll have access to, to the fuels off here from the Netherlands. Um, well, British Raj may need their fuel. I don't know at some point. So, yet yeah, we've got we've got plenty of fuel. I think that's a bit under, but I don't know. Well, that's for export or whatever. But, um, uh, yeah, probably they have a bunch more. I haven't really played with Germany under this new thing, but export just generally overall and specifically to us if we want it. So we've got access to plenty of fuel. Um, yeah, I see what's here and I have played through to the defeat of France and I will have to ramp up. <coughs> but please understand, um, Duncan, well, I'm not playing Germany. If Germany, you're, you're talking about a different game. Right now, I can't have any more fuel. I have the maximum amount of fuel that I can store up. I can't get any more unless, and there's the unless there, unless I start building fuel silos, which means I have to stop building um, uh, dockyards or um, military factories. And so I would rather get the ships built now and in production and later build more fuel silos. So I have maxed out my current fuel. Um, I, I, if I trade for more fuel, it doesn't help me. I've, I've stored up as much as I stored up. I can do so. So I can't do any more. Able strike tactics. Very good. Okay, November. Okay, getting close to doing those. Um, da -da -da. No, I, I want your... Um, your views please 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 do and and i will explain myself like 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 i did and if i sorry if i'm if it seems heated i don't mean to be um because you have your um understanding of things and i will tell you mine and i may be wrong um let's I want mountain troops before I want. Mountain troops might work very well in Norway, so let's get going with that. So, yeah. Um, and I do miss things, too. Um, you know, uh, the things that should be done that I don't do. Okay. Military high command. We're getting ready for the war defending France. So we're looking at it, and we're going to defend it primarily with infantry units, France at least. So we're going to go with Kenneth Anderson Infantry Expert, which infantry division attack and defense improved. So we will do that. Surprised that Republicans Spain Spain is on their own okay well here we go this is and i've noticed they did stop justifying against us um and czechoslovakia is yet not in our thing so they're on their own or we must defend it so we can get um condemn aggression opinion condemn uh, war goals against um, that and gets event so we could push for that but we're not prepared for this so we're going to do the historic thing and um I wouldn't say betray Czechoslovakia because we there is no real way capable to defend it, but we're doing that. We're planning for a late 39, early 1940 start of the war.
Yeah. Um, well, it just I'm I've played and I've looked at at the situation. Okay. Question of Yugoslavia, and I, I get where you're coming from, and it can become a struggle, and you just have to sort of manage it as it gets ready. Treaty of Munich might mean peace in our time, uh, or it may not. Germany is hardly the only country seeking to redraw the borders of Europe. The government of Prince Paul has so far been um, surprising them about the fate of their main armament supplier. This has made quite a few people in the diplomatic service wonder if the Yugoslavs knew what was going to happen, and they may have, in fact, agreed to it. We, should we consider um, reminding them that any sort of agreement with Germany will be considered as a hostile act if war were to break out. Um, British pressure, we must um, still be, they must still be in shock. We're going to, we're going to put pressure on them. Because if war breaks out, um, we're going to tell them that they're, we're not going to like it. We can go back to this map. Okay, so we've improved our radar. And that's the other thing that as we get closer, I want to... We start out with some radar. Because Britain had some radar. That, it's a little early in 36, I think, for this. But we do have some radar here. Um, we will be um, building this up. Um, hopefully, either by the war or before the um, start of the war. Okay, November, um, 108 days. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Get some decryption going. Um, do we still under the effects of it? Um, oh, are we looking? I th think we may be, or maybe it is off. It could be off. I guess it's off now. It, I guess it's gone. I didn't notice that. I know. I knew we had it before, um, but and there's uh, several events and everything tied around all of that. But I guess that's off now that this is going on. Basically, and if nothing else puts a nail in it, is the Czechoslovakia um, question. It's only right now that um, Chamberlain becomes what is rearmor. He only only at this point does he start to wake up for rearming Britain. Okay, how are we doing? We got a lot of troops, that's good. We have some divisions currently in training. What is our current equipment stockpiles? 30,000 motorized, okay. Well, I think we're going to double the amount of infantry divisions in production. And that will, of course, mean a bunch more stuff. But I want a big... Because we may lose a lot of divisions in France, and so I want reserves of equipment. Get some Royal Gurkhas building. Well, currently we don't have that as a um, unit type, and I don't think we ever will. But we can um, request forces up to 20 divisions. We're not going to request them now. We're at peace and we don't need them. But hopefully they have some good... Um, can we see their, um, uh, I don't know if we can see their um, order of battles for their divisions. I don't think so. Even though they're, now, see, we have, we know what they're doing, you know, um, for their integrated princely railways. And IKB and I talked a while ago, we'd love to see um, Railway Empire do a British India um, DLC. Um, just a note to those watching, I will be playing very shortly the Railway Empire game um, German Reich DLC. Um, Germany is just they call it, but it's actually form, be, starts before the formal formation of the 
um, unification of Germany um, and railway development. Now we'll be playing that together. Badge to make some. Well, um, not to get. I don't think we can get Gurkhas. Um, well, you're talking about. Um, uh, oh, pause. Specifically, a Gurkha type unit. I don't think we have that option. Um, but we can see about trying to get some some of India's. And that's basically they were able. Yes, we. I. Yeah, well. Yeah, I understand what you're saying uh, about that, JP, and that's not a bad. A bad idea. Um, okay, well. Yeah, we'll throw in. Well, how many? How many? Okay, we need about three more. No, oh, and we have. Okay, so we'll. We'll do a couple of more up here. Now, we are going to now um, come over here. Um, we're going to develop Australia, which, as you see, civilian factory, civilian factory, two naval dockyards and a naval dockyard. And that, and plus, they'll get um, increased public opinion and things. So, we will develop Australia next. Um, no, I mean just use some divisions using British man or Indian manpower to build. Okay, um, the decision designer, you're talking, okay, okay, you're talking here. Um, yeah, we could, oh, I didn't know this. Thank you, I actually didn't know this. I had not looked here. Okay, so we could do these, um, and we could copy these. I did not know this, so, well. I really wanted to just see what it is. Okay, well, um, we're going to make sure you want to. Yes, we're de deleting that because we can come back here. I did not know this. Thank you. Yeah, we'll use Indian manpower. That's 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 very interesting. Like I'm saying, I did not. I want to just view. Okay, so this is not a very good armor division in that it's. In a way, it's a little better than ours because ours just is an armored regiment or tank brigade that does has no support, but that would be slow. Um, infantry template, okay. Um, let's see. I'm looking to see if we have something with Gurkhas here. Um, specifically. I'm not seeing it. As an elite um, unit type, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, so we can use XP to adjust, but um, I was looking to see that. Okay, I did not know this. That's British Malaya. And, of course, we have the United Kingdom, which, we're, of course, we already are. But So we can get that. Okay, I did not know that. We're not going to... Well... What's their best garrison district? Yeah, I want the support units. Okay, engineers, nice. Engineers reconnaissance, better. Reconnaissance artillery with mainline artillery unit. More artillery. Okay, we're going to copy this. We're going to train one of these. And where do we have, where can we put, nope. I was wondering where this, let's put them here. So we are now training up, and I presume we're going to equip, but with their manpower. Oh, this is great. I did not know this. Thank you. I've been looking around through a lot of this stuff, but I did not know we could get, directly build their unit, or use our equipment to build their units, but for us. We were. Oh, that is great.
We're still just training away here in Britain to earn up more of these army experience points. We need to get to 10. I want to put reconnaissance. Okay, small caliber. Okay, and we're now in January 39, which I was sort of waiting for with some of these other things. And we're going to come here, which will increase the number of factories in the state, which will build, build more dockyards and things. Okay, managed. So, yes, I know about, but I didn't know. Um, British Raj. Very good. Signal companies, very good. Now over to here. Um construction speed. Yeah, we want to because we're still building more bases, we're gonna do that first. I think we're going to we currently that'll cost us half a point per day, so we'll still be making a point per day developing in Australia. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let's nation building in the British Raj. Well, we want to tie them closely to us. Okay, come in here. We, as you can see, we're moving our, and we should probably put him, at least temporarily, under there. This is our mobile units. Oh, no, no, no. You stay here. You, they were in, well, you want to run them, maybe? Get out of somewhere where they're attrition. Attrition up, keep total attrition. National of Spain won, and we got prepared defenses. Very nice. Okay, yes. Um, good, but we're going to come here and get better production. And um, now we're going to start on some radar. Let's do that there. And let's start down here reason we're doing this now is because we're going to wait and then we'll get be able to put um, more factories in once we get um, uh, this concentrated industry level 3 done. more political power. Also, which is going to be very interesting and we'll uh, talk about it a little bit more because we have sort of a little bit of dead time here. Um, is the new government an exile mechanic? That is very interesting, and we're just we're thinking about it because of the um, learning about able to build um, colonial troops myself, because um, I knew very well that we could um, request um, units, and that is one of my biggest, biggest um, dislikes of Hearts of Iron, three in that I can't um, get units from whether they're my puppets or um, my Axis allies because I could easily create events to make um, uh, allies a type of puppet um, just for coordination. But with the governments in exile, um, 
when, say, Poland falls, it will calculate that Britain, though Poland obviously is not but um, likely, but when, say, more uh, and historically, but when Poland falls or when um, the Netherlands fall, Britain gets a percentage of the equipment at the time that gets smuggled out or evacuated out of um, the Netherlands or wherever, sort of like Germany capturing um, equipment at, and taking it, but you'll get a percentage of that. You'll get a government in exile in your own country, you know, um, you know, in Britain as the leader of the um, alliance. And you also get some units arriving that escape that will add to your order of battle. So that is very good. Okay, so we're now at 39. We could issue gas mask, which helps war support and gain stability. We could use more war support. We got plenty of stability. But that allows us to um, military training, which gets rid of the war to end all wars. Um, where is that? The war um, recruitable population. So that would boost 25% of our recruitable population. That is um, something that we will get to at some point. I don't know if that's what we're going to do next, um, but possibly. Yeah, you go down that path. Because um, the other thing I want to do is develop the Raj. Maybe do, well, eventually all of these, but um, I don't want to. Asia, I'm putting off that. If Fortify East Asia, that. Singapore, Hong Kong, civilian factor, but the naval dockyard is very tempting me. Um, destroy your focus, motorized army, BSA, that's nice to 10% reduction in cost of, I think, I think we're, because I want to get that recruitable population up, so we're going to issue gas masks to our population, world tension is obviously over 20% now, what are we at, 32%, yeah. Um, mostly, no, I haven't decided against helping the scientists, the German and Italian. I've mostly just been using the political power somewhere else. Um, my opinion is we need more political power. Um, when the game first came out, Hitler as a, as a leader, you know, in, in this position, spammed lots and lots of political power out for Germany. And it was too much, so it was basically cut in half. Um, when I coded up co Third Reich events for Hearts of Iron IV, I restored Hitler's um, over political power um, generation because I used up a bunch of political power in the events that I created. So um, having whether, you know, a particular leader or a particular one of these things um, or something or minister down here generate more political power um, is fine so long as it's sort of required to do this. And um you know it just how much do we do at any one time um and this is good to think about now okay we could um let's see these few guys here quartermaster general naval and air yeah good nice but a little bit of political power but ideological drift well we're we don't need to ideologically drift anywhere towards us um uh, daily democratic support, we got plenty of that. And armaments organizer conversion. So we don't really need to fill this slot with anybody currently available. Some would be nice and helpful, but not needed. Aircraft designer, that I want to get before, I, before 1940 um, for when we do the Spitfires. Um, yeah, you know, I think... I think now let, let's let's grab because we've got um, so this will uh, disrupt um, stability a little bit here. We've got a hundred percent, and we have um, ruling party popularity and George the fifth here. Um, no, sorry, the sixth. Sorry, yeah, I do know how to read a little bit, um, and plus other things. So I think we can afford it. So we're going to grab that. That would be good because I did had been thinking about that. So we're going to grab the Germans. 
fortify it because you can do that the Burma Road later supports Chinese yeah I, I do I do know that we can get down that path and that is something I'm just focused on the European theater first um, and we're gonna see how this goes um, as you can see recently and remember the war it's fairly early in 39 and it was um, in historically in sort of late um, 38 this time we had um, and it will vary from time to time um, Spain fall uh, you know a Republic in Spain and Japan is sort of historical sort of not um, but I think by now they were down here but not in this section here um, at this time so they do a lot of work um, on balancing the game and trying to make this work um, because then they'll tell you this is not a historical simulation. This is a game. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, oh uh, um, uh, uh, I didn't realize. Yeah, we don't want to actually exercise you. Um, stop exercising. I want to exercise the infantry, not the tanks. Um, so yeah, I shouldn't be under that command. And so they work um, to balance. for me to ever do yeah and, and they may they may do that but it's one thing to balance the game well for AI versus AI it's another thing to deal with the game AI versus humans that is where I think they're falling down okay we're going to uh, let's see I wanted to get those those are going good um, we're gonna wait till 40 uh, magnetic detonator what messed the Americans up okay yeah I think we can um, afford to do this now so we'll get that really fast so we're gonna have lots of radar 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 everywhere is hood your current flagship I don't know um, not even sure where the hood is uh, you know where it was likely to be in 1936 um, that's where I'm presuming it it is now. Rodney Royal Oak Royal Saw. Yes, Hood current flagship. Yep, it currently is, and they've they've uh, added the fla um uh yeah yeah well um they're ooh, it up in yeah we're up in Scapa Flow right. Actually, in 1936 they weren't up in Scapa Flow to the best of my knowledge. Um. Uh, in 36, because um, I just recently re was reading um, stuff, that as the war is getting likely, um, like around this time, they start reactivating, re um, uh, getting the base ready to house the fl fleet up in Scapa Flow. Um, but they weren't there th then. It, it comes eventually. So they most of the ships are you know down in populated parts of Britain so that sailors can, you know, they're not isolated up in the, <laughs> the Orkneys. Trust me, the Orkneys of Scotland, there ain't much happening up there to this damn day. I've never been there, but I've been, well, I guess uh, this sort of closeness. I have not been up to Cathness up here. I'd like to go up here someday, right at the tip of Um, But I've been up to Inverness up here a um, fair number of times. I've lived here for eh, not quite six months, but almost six months. Here in Edinburgh once, and I've driven all over. Well, you know, from here all over this parts of Scotland, lots. So I know it fairly well. Okay, so um, yeah, um, let's see. What do we want to do? Um, yeah, I know it's more, more radar. Um, we're getting close. Let's build two more factories. Now, um, one here in London, and do the power one in Sussex, then more radar. Okay, that's maxed out for that zone currently. Oh, no. There's a problem with small islands. You get to where you got to be careful where you click. More radar there. We're going to come over here to Alexandria. Go on some radar. I'm not worrying about Asia again yet, but we will definitely get something down to here we can build in our colonies. So 
we will do that eventually. But notice also here, with especially now that we've built a bigger radar, you don't need radar in each one of these provinces to cover the area effectively, as you can see. So it's, it's better once you have the tech to concentrate it. Perhaps refit her? Maybe. What are you suggesting we refit? Um, Uh, yeah. Stats. Kilometer range. I, um, I, um, know the, um, Bismarck sinks the hood, but, um, with sort of a lucky shot, but I don't know specifically what um we would do in this game version here to do but and well i think we'll we'll save that for next episode um the discussion and everything so i want to thank you all for watching thanks for liking the videos if you would if you haven't already please subscribe i also love hearing from you so love hearing comments on what you're thinking of the game what you're thinking of um the current setup um please comment and of course really do me a big favor and click either one of the one of the videos popping up on your screen or one of the youtube suggested videos on the right side of your screen one of my videos there um just watch a few seconds of it it helps out the you with the youtube algorithm and for what it recommends to other people so i would really um uh appreciate that Thanks so much. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.